This section highlights the included components in the package downflow evolution. The DFEP ships with a Delta P controller to monitor differential pressure between the clean air and dirty air plenums and provide a visual display of filter condition. The Delta P control and a timer manage the pressure drop by initiating pulse cleaning based on user-established high and low pressure set points. An alarm set point can also be established to alert the operator when filters are plugged or to send a signal to another location. An integrated airflow control damper is located in the exhaust plenum of the DFEP to regulate airflow when the collector is in operation. The DFEP collector ships with a single Donaldson built DFEP filter cartridge factory installed behind each filter access cover. The DFEP filter cartridge's unique shape is specifically designed to fit within the DFEP collector. Additional features help ensure filters are installed in the correct orientation and direction during servicing. The standard 17 gallon dust bin is located below the hopper to collect dust removed from the air stream. The dust bin is sealed to the hopper discharge with a convenient clamping arrangement which lifts the dust bin against the sealing gasket on the base of the hopper to ensure a dust tight seal during operation. An optional 41 gallon bin is also available. An internal factory installed fan and motor assembly produced the external airflow and static pressure stated in the product literature. The fan and motor assembly is located near the base of the unit in order to increase stability by lowering the center of gravity of the collector. The fan motor chamber is lined with acoustical foam and is designed to work in combination with the exhaust plenum to reduce average operational sound pressure levels to 76 decibels with a peak noise of 92 decibels at pulsing. A three-quarter inch sprinkler coupling is located at the upper front center of the DFEP collector. This coupling can help simplify the field installation of fire control system components such as sprinklers. The following section covers the instructions on DFEP collector setup. Upon arrival, inspect collector and report any damage to delivery carrier. File any damage claims with the delivery carrier. Request a written inspection report from the claims inspector to substantiate all damage claims. Compare the collector received with a description of product ordered. Report any incomplete shipments to the delivery carrier and your Donaldson Torret representative. Unloading and positioning. Remove any crates or shipping straps. Inspect for any damage and or missing parts and report to freight carrier. Check for any hardware which may have become loose during shipment and tighten as necessary. Locate the top lifting points on the side of the collector facing up. Lift the package collector and remove from transport container. Secure lifting straps to both lifting points. Slowly lift the collector and allow the base of collector to pivot under the lifting points. Once a collector has been lifted off the pallet, remove the pallet. Lower the collector slowly while the top of the collector is allowed to pivot over the collector base until the collector is upright and resting on the floor. Remove lifting straps from both lifting points. Collector can now be moved using a fork truck. Pick up the collector with fork truck and transport to final location. Secure collector to floor with appropriate anchors. Complete electrical supply connections to the collector electrical junction box. The DFEP ships from the factory with much of the internal electrical wiring already completed for the fan and cleaning controls. Complete electrical connections between the Delta P control panel and any associated equipment. Complete connection to a compressed air supply. Installation should include a shutoff valve and bleed type regulator with gauge, filter, and automatic condensate valve. Purge compressed air lines to remove debris before connecting to the collector. Connect inlet duct to collector inlet. Install any ancillary equipment such as spark, fire, and or explosion mitigation devices. Verify fan operation and proper rotation shown in the video above. Reverse fan rotation if necessary. Adjust compressed air regulator to 60 PSI. 
Verify pulse cleaning operation. Noting the factory set is to deliver a pulse every 10 seconds during cleaning. Confirm compressed air supply is adequate, allowing for full pressure recovery between pulses. Set up and confirm Delta P control set points setting low at 2.0, high at 4.0, and alarm at 6.0. Verify the dust container is in place and properly sealed. Verify that all cartridge filters are installed and all filter access covers are properly aligned and tight. Start fan and verify design air volume. Adjust airflow control damper to limit airflow to design volume as necessary. The DFEP collector can be interlocked with associated equipment. Observe the DFEP and confirm it starts up when associated equipment is turned on and shuts off when the associated equipment is shut down. The following video highlights the instructions for changing out a filter cartridge on the package DFE. To begin, turn off collector and lock out all energy sources. Starting at the top row, open a filter access cover by rotating the knob counterclockwise. Swing the filter access cover to the side to allow access to the filter cartridge. Slide the exposed filter cartridge out of the access port along the suspension yoke. Remove the filter cartridge and dispose of properly. Inspect and clean the sealing surfaces on the new filter cartridge and on the tube sheet. Align the gasket end of a new filter cartridge on the end of the suspension yoke. The filter shape and yoke work together to ensure proper filter alignment during installation. To assist with alignment, an alignment mark at the top of the filter end cap must match with the alignment mark at the top of the filter access opening. Slide the new filter fully into the collector along the filter suspension yoke. Inspect and clean the access cover gaskets. Replace gaskets if they become worn or damaged. Swing the access cover into place and engage the knob on the threaded end of the filter suspension yoke. Tighten the filter access cover by turning the knob clockwise. After the knob has been hand tightened three turns, a tool assist may be used. The access cover is considered closed when it is seated and sealed against the filter housing to ensure a dust-tight seal. Repeat these steps until all filters have been replaced. On a daily basis, visually inspect and record the operating pressure drop across each dust collector. It is normal for the pressure drop to fluctuate during operation as a collector passes through cleaning cycles and as new production schedules fluctuate from light to heavy. New filters may have a pressure drop of less than one inch water gauge. However, as filters become seasoned, they will reach an equilibrium pressure drop. Generally, one to six inches water gauge is considered normal. An excessively high pressure drop could be an indication of a malfunction in the cleaning mechanism, excessive airflow, plugged filters, or heavy dust loading conditions. Consult your installation and operation manual for troubleshooting recommendations. Visually inspect and record the operating pressure drop across each HEPA filter. A slight incremental increase in pressure drop is normal, approximately 0.25 inches water gauge per month. A faster pressure drop rise could be an indication of a dust collector filter failure. To ensure correct pressure drop indication, remove one line at a time from the pressure drop indicating gauge barb fitting. Blow through the lines toward the collector with less than 25 PSI, noting that damage may occur if higher PSI is used or if air is directed towards the pressure gauge. Air dryers and automatic condensing valves should be installed on compressed air lines prior to entering each dust collector. Inspect to ensure proper operation and that moisture is being removed from the compressed air supply. Troubleshoot, repair, or replace per the specific manufacturer's instructions. Consult your installation and operation manual for correct pulse pressure recommendations for the dust collector. Every three months, check to see if pulse cleaning cycle is working properly. Activate the pulse cleaning sequence by placing the control in a continuous cleaning mode, 
either downtime cleaning or by changing the high set point. Listen to see if each pulse clean cycle is consistent. Each pulse will sound consistent and there will be as many pulses per cycle as there are diaphragm valves. If there are inconsistencies, check the solenoid valves and diaphragm valves for functionality individually as described further. To check if solenoid valves are being energized in the correct sequence, place your hand behind the solenoid enclosure. During each pulse, air should be released from the exhaust port of the solenoid valve. Confirm that the solenoid valve is working by feeling for compressed air release. If air is not released from a solenoid valve, the solenoid valve or the diaphragm valve may be malfunctioning. Check if the diaphragm valve is functioning properly by pushing in on the green plastic release to remove the corresponding black hose from the solenoid enclosure. When the hose is removed from the solenoid enclosure, air will release from the black hose and the diaphragm valve will open and release compressed air into the collector. When the hose is sealed with a finger, the diaphragm valve will close and stop releasing compressed air. If the diaphragm valve stops releasing compressed air when the hose is sealed, then the diaphragm valve is functioning properly. Repair or replace the solenoid valve. If the diaphragm valve does not stop releasing compressed air when the black hose is sealed, then repair or replace the diaphragm valve. Ensure that the black hose is reinserted into the solenoid enclosure. Repeat this process for all solenoid valve and diaphragm valve pairs. Every six months, verify condition of filters. If filter element pressure drop exceeds six inches water gauge, verify proper system airflow according to original system design recommendations. Remember that excessive airflow can increase pressure drop. Change filters if necessary. Always use Donaldson filters for best performance and life. Every six months, check motor and fan for correct rotation by referencing the rotation sticker located on the motor mounting plate. Check for smooth operations of fan wheel and motor. Inspect for and tighten belts, nuts, bolts, and set screws as needed. Consult the installation and operation manual for troubleshooting recommendations as needed. Ensure all objects such as tools are removed from the inside of the clean air plenum. If objects are left in the clean air plenum, damage to the fan could occur. Adjust exhaust damper as needed. Airflow should be adjusted to match design recommendations. Excessive airflow can shorten filter life and cause fan motor failure. Immediately after filter changes, adjust exhaust damper. Because the pressure drop or restriction to airflow through the filters will decrease when new filters are installed, airflow through the collector will increase. Because of this, it is necessary to adjust the fan damper to restrict the airflow through the collector to the recommended level immediately after installation of new filters. As a filter's age and the pressure drop or restrictions to air increases, you may need to open the damper to reach design conditions. Too little airflow may result in dropout and ducting or poor capture at the source. The dustbin should be empty daily or more frequently as required. Avoid filling more than two-thirds full. To begin, power off the collector and ensure the downtime cleaning cycle has ended. Open the dustbin access door by rotating the two handles counterclockwise. Reach in and lift the dustbin locking bar until the bar clears the top of the bin. This should lower the bin to the ground. Roll the dustbin from under the collector hopper. Transfer dust from the bin to a suitable disposal site. Inspect the area around the dustbin and remove any spilled dust. Inspect and clean the hopper discharge gasket surface. Replace gasket if worn or damaged. With the locking bar up, align and insert the dustbin under the collection hopper until it contacts mechanical stops on the hopper assembly. Lower dustbin locking bar to its down and locked position. Close and latch dustbin access door by rotating the handles clockwise.